You ready? Ready. You sure? I'm comp- uh, extra sure. <laughs> you know, Blake, something that really makes me mad is customers call me all the time and they want to know why store X brand Y can sell computers so much cheaper than we can. If I had a dollar for every time I had to deal with one of those requests, I probably could buy everybody all the computers that they would want to buy. So let's start to explain to people why and how, you know, technology companies aren't the greatest marketing companies in the world, especially from how they name things. So like one of the things I just had some very long conversations with a client on was basically Intel processors called me, they want to buy notebooks. Everybody wants to buy notebooks right now with everything that's going on. And, you know, certain processors are, you know, they're like, it's an i5 or it's an i7. And I'd be like, well, what generation is it? And they're like, well, what are you talking about? And I'm like, you don't understand. Just because Intel continues to call processors i3, i5, i7, they didn't make it a little bit nicer because we now have an i9. So everybody knows that (laughs) one's new. But when we talk about i5 and i7, which are the two most popular in our world, there's generations of them. So could you kind of explain to everybody how Intel is doing this and what to pay attention to, whether you're buying them from us or not, pay attention to the generation you're buying. Right. Especially if you're buying from that big online company that ships everything anywhere as fast as you can, because the people selling on it aren't taking the time to make sure you understand that generation conversation. Right. And so Intel has done a good job in recent years with keeping their naming schemes the same over time. You know, before it would just kind of when they would come up with a new processor or make it a little better, they would change the name. So now now Intel's in much more of a an auto automobile naming scheme. So they have their I3, I5, and I7, which you can think of as your as the make of your car, right? So you, you know it's it's a mustang i'm going to use mustang because i'm looking at you so it's a it's a mustang so there you know your i7 is the mustang it's always a mustang and then your your i5 is the ford fusion and then your i3 is the ford focus there ford doesn't change those names whatsoever but then the generation that mike referenced that's your model year so there's the 2020 ford mustang there's the 2019 ford mustang in Intel, they call them generations. So right now, we're currently in the 10th generation of the Intel Core i processors, which is the i3, i5, i7. And the generations are generally released once a year. Last year, we actually went through two or three. They came out with 8th, 9th, and 10th gen all at the same time. Um, the, the generation changes aren't necessarily always big generational, you know, big changes to the you know, fundamental changes to the processors. But there are little things that they change that make them better than the last, always. They, they never get worse or else <laughs> Intel would kind of cease to exist. So when you're looking at these processors, you'll see that the, the processor is named an i7-4790. Well, that means it's a fourth generation processor. The rest of the numbers mean things too, but that's, that's for, another, that's for that, another date. That's another one. So, but the 4790, that means it's a fourth generation processor. So if you think about even two a year, we're in Gen 10 right now. So if you go back to Gen 4, that's at least a three-year-old processor. And remember, the processor is literally the brain of your computer. I mean, yep. no- nothing else happens in your computer without the processor. Um, and it's what lets you do things quickly. You know, your, your processor is what lets you do things quickly. Your RAM is what lets you do more things. So when you're when you're looking at these, these computers from the, the big box retailers who shall, shall not be named, and you, you see, well, I can, you know, Becca wants to charge me X for that. I can buy it here for Y. Look, look into it a little deeper. It, while it might say I5, so that's awesome. You're getting a Ford Fusion, but what they're not telling you is it's a, it's a 2016 Ford Fusion that, they're, that we're trying to sell you a 2020 because they've made four iterations of it that have significantly changed it. You know, in, in 2016, that Ford Fusion didn't have CarPlay, you know, and, and right. this one does. So it's, you know, it's, it's very different. In, in recent, in very, in the more recent generational changes from generation seven to generation six, that, that gap for the lower end, the I5, the I3, they introduced what was called hyperthreading in those. And it essentially doubled the core count in those processors. So it made them twice as powerful. It, that, was, that was previously a, a technology held just for the I7 uh, line. 
but in that that generation six to generation seven uh, update, they released it for the i5 and i3. So if you're looking at anything below Gen 7 in the i5 or i3, it is quite literally half as powerful as anything Gen 7 and above. And there's and we take into account those those changes before we we suggest anything. You know, we might not always be suggesting Gen 10 processors. Yeah, it's the latest and greatest, but maybe that's not the right thing. If you're if you're buying 80 computers. Gen 10 is probably not the best thing right now because there just isn't that many of them. Because right. I mean, it's it's a recent release. So if we go Gen 9, there's a lot more of availability, and we'll weigh the differences. If if this was, you know, a couple of years ago, and we were weighing the difference between getting you a Gen 6 or a Gen 7 i5, we would definitely go with Gen 7 because it it did have that big increase. Right. So that's the kind of care and and thought that we're putting into our recommendations when we make hardware recommendations that necessarily aren't happening i'm sure they're happening at some level because at some level someone's making the decision of what goes on the shelves but i don't think it's necessarily happening on the floor when you're there asking questions about the computer well and uh, to a certain extent what i would tell you tell everybody is that some manufacturers may skip you know like literally i think lenovo right now is still largely either gen 8 or gen 9 i don't even think they have a gen 10 on the market but it's important to pay attention. Um, you know, you, you don't want to buy, you know, as Blake's kind of joking, because I have a Ford Mustang at some point in time. I'm sure Blake will find a picture of it to stick on this so that you can see. You know, you don't want to buy something and expect it's brand new when it's not. And that in IT is a very bad thing. So when you're trying to buy IT gear because the pace is so fast, I, I joke all the time. Computers are worse than dog years. You know, for every one human year, a dog ages seven, your IT infrastructure probably averages 15 or 16 in a year. Yeah. You know, so take the time to make sure you understand what you're buying. You understand the games that are getting played with this generation thing. You know, I, I do, you know, wish back to the days when it was an 8086, an 8286, <laughs> an 8386, an 8486. Because simply put, you at least knew something was changing. Today, the box just says i5, i7, and nobody takes the time. So just one of those things to be looking for. We've sold a lot of notebooks lately that we've had to explain that on and make people understand, hey, listen, there's a reason that that 6th gen machine is a little bit cheaper (laughs) than everything else we're selling. But I I thought it was a great thing to share with everybody. So as always, I I promise we try to keep these things to seven or eight minutes. We're coming up on that. So uh, good to talk to everybody again and hopefully see you soon. Yep. See you next week.